So this month, our theme is My Passion, My Purpose. And our talk title this week is Perfectly Imperfect Passions. So I was thinking about this. I thought, well, this is so perfect for me because (laughs) I'm a recovering perfectionist. (laughs) And so uh, one of the things that I remembered is in the 12-step rooms we often hear, it's, it's about progress over perfection, right? And our journey is, is like that, right? And boy, when I got that, my, my journey became so much easier internally, right? I used to have these unrealistic expectations for myself to be perfect. It was terribly hard on myself. Whenever I made a mistake, I was just like, you know that horrible self-talk? Probably some of you can relate, right? I'm not the only one, right? And in fact, that, um, that idea that I, I needed to be perfect would often hold me back from moving forward on any kind of goal that I felt that I wanted to do, uh, accomplish, or even what spirit was prompting me to do. Because partly I was comparing myself to other people and we've talked about this, right? And I would look out, and, you know, Spirit was saying, okay, go do this. And I would look out and see people already doing it in a great way and just thinking to myself, well, I could never do that. And so I wouldn't even bother, right? Why would I even start? Somebody else is doing it better than I ever could. Sometimes we feel inadequate to step into our own unique greatness, right? And it, wa- it wasn't until I began to love myself enough that I started to appreciate my imperfections. And so rather than putting myself down with negative self-talk, and this is, is an example. I may have shared this with you before. But I used to walk around with the theme song in my head from The Wizard of Oz, If I only had a brain. (laughs) Somebody pointed out to me that I should probably change that. (laughs) Gratefully. So taking science of mind classes was instrumental in me accepting that I am whole, complete, and perfect, even with all my imperfections. And you know that whole, complete, and perfect thing that we hear in these rooms? It has really touched a lot of people's lives. Coming into a center for the first time and hearing that you are whole, complete, and perfect. So many people have shared how tears just welled up in their eyes because they didn't believe that. But something inside of them knew it was true. And so when I really began to believe that I am a unique, individualized expression of God, I realized that I could not, in good conscience, demean myself anymore because I was demeaning the divine within me. So that was helpful for me in letting go of that negative self-talk. And I began to realize that I am close enough to perfect, and instead of criticizing myself for my mistakes, I knew I was making spiritual progress when I was beginning to be able to laugh at myself when I made mistakes. (laughs) And there was a period of time when I remember that it was like the universe was supporting me in letting go of the criticizing because whenever I would make a mistake, it was the biggest blunder I could have imagined. Oh, my gosh. So that would have been my worst nightmare, right? But I knew I was making progress when I actually just had to start laughing because how in the world could anyone have made that mistake so good? (laughs) And so I began to have enough self-compassion to love myself through the discomfort. And I began to look for the opportunity that was being presented to me to learn something. While I was preparing this talk, I learned that the company, Intuit, this is so great, gives a special award for the best failure and creates failure parties. 
Really? Because their co-founder, Scott Cook, states that every failure teaches something important that can be the seed for the next great idea. Right? And Google even has a reward for making mistakes and taking risks. Both companies recognize that lessons come out of discovering what doesn't work. Right? Yeah. So when we step out of our comfort zone, we open to growth and expansion. And I know that several of you here today have expressed to me that they've felt inspired to step out of their comfort zone and said yes to doing something that felt really uncomfortable, even though it was hard or maybe even scary. So I want you to know I see you, I hear you, and I am so proud of you. And I want you to know that as you do that, as you expand your own beingness, there is that ripple effect that's going on. And it's affecting our whole spiritual community. So thank you for being brave. It takes courage to step out of our comfort zone, right? Which reminds me, some of us stepped out of our comfort zone Friday evening. <laughs> we showed up for the Friday Fun Music Jam. Carol Unterseer came and played the keyboard, and she brought a guitar that I attempted to play. My fingers are so sore. <laughs> I haven't played a guitar in maybe 15 years. <laughs> Javon came and sang. Pat Cooper, Pat Cooper came with her shakers. <laughs> and Juanita supported all of us with her expertise, singing, shaking, and even played the congas for us. And while we were doing that, Pat Cooper took a video. And I posted it on our Facebook members page. So you can see us. Right? We had a blast. So I have this vision of us having our own Sierra Center for Spiritual Living group. Our own house band. Right? Can you imagine? I mean... We play the congas, the, the keyboard, the guitar, right? I know somebody that plays the violin and the flute. So if you like to sing or you have any musical instruments that you like to play, please let me know because we're starting our own Sierra Center house band. <laughs> okay, but the thing that we had to do was let go of our desires of wanting to be better and we had to embrace being okay on Friday with just what was happening, right? We were doing our best in the moment. And isn't that what we're all doing? We're all doing our best in the moment. Guess what? That is perfectly good enough. And you can have fun doing it. So I'd like to share this quote by Brene Brown. Because true belonging only happens when we present our authentic, imperfect selves to the world, our sense of belonging can never be greater than our level of self-acceptance. Our sense of belonging can never be greater than our level of self-acceptance. Wow, that's pretty profound. Something I learned... Uh, years ago, was that I had a tendency to be fully focused on attaining a goal in the shortest amount of time possible. And what I realized was that when I did that, I lost the most important thing. And that was actually connecting with the human beings that were around me. Our connection with one another and community is so important, and it's so valuable. Today may be the last day of our lives. How do we want to show up and spend it with the people in our lives? In our Science of Mind philosophy, we learn that the universe delights in express, expressing itself as us, and all things are working together for our good. And I love this saying, the whole universe is expressing conspiring for my highest good. Can you believe that about your life? I do. 
And I am blessed beyond measure because I live from that belief system. I invite you to do the same. When I look back on the cataclysmic events in my life experience, I could call them traumas, or I could call them transitions, or I could call them opportunities. But what I know to be true, and you can quote me on this, is that my soul is always calling to me. Every circumstance and opportunity needed for my highest spiritual evolution. And because I know this to be true, I can trust in the process of life to provide everyone and everything I need to support me through whatever my soul brings into my life experience, no matter how challenging. How challenging. We don't believe there are any accidents on our journey. Our science of mind and spirit philosophy teaches us that everything unfolds according to our belief system. So if I look at everything as an opportunity to further my spiritual evolution, then my perception about the circumstances and experiences can change. I can look through the lens of curiosity until I can see the blessing in it. And when I do see the blessing in it, at that point, I can feel a sense of peace within me because of the gratitude that comes from seeing the perfection in all the messiness that I may have created. And I can love myself for creating that messiness because that is exactly what I needed to go through in order to end up right here on this stage in front of you today. So I invite you to take some time this week to look back on your life and the messiness that you may have created. What were the lessons that you learned? What were the opportunities that were presented to you for your spiritual evolution? Jim Carrey shared a story about his father. He said that his father could have been an amazing, uh, an amazing comedian. But his father didn't believe that he could do that. And so his father chose a conservative job as an accountant. Well, when Jim Carrey was 12 years old, his father got let go of that job. And so Jim Carrey was sharing that one of the most important lessons that he learned from his father is that we can fail doing things we don't want to do. So why not take a chance and do the things that we really do want to do. <laughs> so if you're not doing what you love because of some beliefs about yourself that may be holding you back, I invite you to let those beliefs go and replace them with beliefs that serve your highest good. You know what? We get to do that because you are the chooser. So why not choose and live with beliefs that serve your highest purpose. In closing, I'd like to remind you that the whole universe is conspiring for your highest good. So get out there, live your passion, bless this world with your beautiful, unique, perfectly imperfect self as only you can. Namaste.